Welcome to Homicide the Podcast. I'm Kevin. And I'm Brandon. <laughs> hey, Brandon. Hey, Kevin. <laughs> we uh, are excited to be back. This is our technically third <laughs> Homotown uh, story episode, but um, our second one that'll be up. And I'm really excited because we are doing this in a new way where we're going to have people uh, tell their own Homotown story, which I think is exciting. And so without further ado, <laughs> let me invite one of my really good fucking friends who I love probably the most in this world oh. outside of Brandon. That's something <laughs> big to live um, up yeah, to. Yeah, that was a bold statement. Anyway, right? um, Maddie, welcome. You. Hi, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, this is um, this setup we have right now. This is how I picture every podcast I listen to you. <laughs> guys, like I'm just over here making my own commentary as you guys are like talking. Oh yeah. my god, yes. Um, so this is like a dream. This feels very surreal, and it well, feels weird to have like someone we know that it's just we haven't like it's not like we talk to you all the time. So it's fun being able to bring you in all the way from Colorado and have you here and experience all of this with us. Well, technically we're all in three different States because I'm in New York city right now at our apartment. Brandon's at our house. Well, technically our office in Tampa. And then Maddie is in, uh, is in Colorado, Mm -hmm. which is lovely technology. Right. We love that. Um, Maddie, I'm really excited to have you here, but we might as well tell our listeners like who you are, what you do and how we met. And how we know each other. So I don't know. Who are you? Who am I? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't actually know that answer. Um, <laughs> I'm Maddie. I'm, uh, I've known Kevin, what, how long? 15 years? Maybe more. Like seven. Maybe more. Yeah. So well um, around. <laughs> we met at uh, the bookstore at Auraria Campus in the vault. In downtown, in downtown Denver. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> And then we worked at Whole Foods together for mm-hmm. like one millisecond. It was not that long. <laughs> but we did. You were like, what was that? You like what? Oh, I was going to say, you were like, come work with me at Whole Foods. And then I was like, yay, I got the job. And you were like, okay, bye. <laughs> I'm going to move to New York <laughs> now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, so Maddie and I met um, in college, really. Uh, when we were both going to Metro, I think you were going to Metro mm-hmm. and got a job in the bookstore and it was scandalous. There was a lot of drama, um, oh but I wasn't really involved in the drama. I just listened to it. Um, Maddie, I don't think you were involved in the drama, although some people tried to get you involved with it. Mm-hmm. There was know. some, there was some, uh, fighting there words. Some, <laughs> there were some colorful characters in that. Yes, uh, there was. But, um, one of my fondest memories, Maddie, is... You're going to tell the Candyman story? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping somebody would bring it up. I actually just wrote a note to remind myself. Remind nobody Candyman. does for me, too. Listen, <laughs> I was obsessed with the song, but also the dance and the video that came out with Christina Aguilera for Candyman. And so there was one day that Maddie and I were working, and it was... Uh, it was first off, it was very slow because we all counted very quickly. Because in the the cash office, you were counting all of the tills basically for the day. Sounds and um, um, exciting. It's such thrilling. fun work. <laughs> um, but it was fun because we worked together. But um, I don't even remember how it started, but we fucking spent our, I don't know, six hour shift on a weekend, I think. It was like uh, a Saturday. Was like a Saturday? Yeah. Learning the entire fucking dance to Candyman and performing it. <laughs> In the cash office, which, by the way, had a camera inside of it. Mm-hmm. So we were filmed. And I don't remember how we figured out that we were filmed. But other than somebody fucking showed us. who <laughs> Somebody showed us. And I was like, oh, my God, I wish you guys had that. Oh, I wish we so had it, too. Because I've gotten to experience, like, a, a like, 10-year-old version of it. <laughs> oh, at my bachelorette party. <laughs> it was so much fun. But it was not to the level of what I... No, it probably. See, but but Maddie still had some moves. I was like, oh, I remember. Oh, for that. sure. Yeah, that was right. But uh, we had we, there were chairs involved <laughs> in that dance where we had to like stand on things and jump down from things. It was dangerous. It was acrobatic, That's right? <laughs> God, I would like break a hip at this point <laughs> trying to do that shit. Like my extra eighty pounds that I have. No, thank you. <laughs> um. Anyway, that yeah, that was a, such a fun memory and 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 fun. But we've had a lot of fun. God. Over the years, Maddie used to go out to clubs with me and dancing, and we had a little bit of a wild 
you know, a little slutty phase where mm -hmm. uh, we're quite together. Um, anyway, yeah, Maddie means a lot to me. She's still my friend and uh, forever will be. So yes. she's a lovely husband and two incredible uh, children. And she's just a gem. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, me too. Oh, stop it. So anyway, so Maddie is here to tell us her hometown murder, which is very interesting because I did read it. So I'm excited for you to kind of give us the inside scoop on your hometown murder. So if you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Um, so in Kevin fashion, I named this hometown murder. It's I, called. I love it. It was, you did a great job with the title. <laughs> <laughs> This story's called um, Not All Vegans Are Bad, But This One's a Real Piece of Shit. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. so I'm going to like, I was trying to figure out the best way to do this that I wouldn't like completely fuck it up. Um, so I'll read a little bit and then I'll put any kind of like personal like spin or anything in there. Um, if you've listened, I fuck it up every single time. <laughs> Don't even worry that it, we're not one of those podcasts. <laughs> I love it. That's the whole point is just like, get on and fuck around and figure exactly. it out. Exactly. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> um, okay. So this story takes place back in uh, 2014. So God, oh, 10 years ago. Um, I don't know if I should say the name of the group. I, I, who cares? Um, well, is it the, uh, name the, the name of the person? Is it public? Well, he is. Yes, it's public. So, okay. I just won't say the name of where I'm working. Okay. And if you, if you know, you know, but if, um, you, know. if you don't know, then suck it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. Um, uh, and okay. she's the first guest we have on our podcast. <laughs> right. And just driving away all your listeners. Um, but, it make, but it makes sense because we're a gay podcast. So suck it. That really resonates. Suck it. <laughs> it really yeah. resonates. You know. Do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just transferred from one grocery store to another location down in Highlands Ranch. So I was now working in Highlands Ranch. Gross. Um, it's the worst. Um, but anywho, it's, it's I was Highlands Ranch. Tell where Highlands Ranch is just in relation to where co in Colorado, like Denver and all that. Um, it's about 20, 25 minutes outside of Denver. It's kind of by Parker. It's like a kind of. It's like South. Up, uppity. Yeah. Um, the rich place. place. Yeah. No. Yeah. Lots of, lots of terrible people. Lots of white people. Lots of Trump flags going oh, yeah. down oh, there. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so, so anywho, I had just taken a job as an assistant manager in the bakery department of this grocery store. And um, I was introduced to a cashier that worked at the the Highlands Ranch location. His name was Anthony Milan Ross. And uh, he was a supervisor. Um, seemed to be like a pretty chill dude. I mean, I really didn't speak to him a whole lot. He middle aged guy. He was popular among the other cashiers. He had a, a wife named Iris and a, a young son named Nigel. Um, unique names. What was his middle yeah. name? Anthony Milan Ross. And I think I, he went by the name of Milan. Like I, I vaguely would. remember that. <laughs> sure. I would have been like, yeah. Milan, call me Milan. Thank you. Milan. He's Milan. So, um, uh, yeah. And so like his wife and son would come into the store. They knew people. They'd been shopping at the store for a really long time. They had a relationship, anything, uh, anyway, but so I met him and a couple of years before I'd met him, he had done a retreat through the company um, that focused on a vegan plant-based lifestyle for weight loss. Mm. And he yep. apparently had lost like 300 pounds doing this. So yep. he was like the success story of the Milan. early days. Was, yeah, that that, of, was that that fucking engine two diet? Remember that shit that they were yes, like, it was that. The, yeah. The immersion program the immersion or whatever they program. called it. Yeah. And they I like can't. shipped you off to Florida for <laughs> a couple of weeks. And then they told you how to be vegan and then they sent you back or whatever oh, they did. Oh, I don't oh, yeah. Because Labels. Florida is the capital of <laughs> veganism. Of healthy eating. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, yeah. Send them to Florida. Yeah, all right. Just go to Florida. It's fine. Right, yeah. Um, but because of that, he had, like, written a cookbook and was, like, doing all this motivational speaking and, like, promoting himself as, like, look how much weight I lost. Like, great. You know, like, in the buzz of all those crazy diets, Engine 2, yeah. vegan, plant-based, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so he... Um, he was, he was kind of in the process of doing that when I met him. 
he was one of those people that like the first time you talk to them, you're like, oh yeah, he's cool. Like he's a nice guy. He's positive. He's, he's happy. And then the second time you talk to him, you're like, mm. and then the third time you talk to him, you're like, I won't talk to you anymore. Like <laughs> I'm just like t- on the precipice of like being around him was like tipping over the edge. And you didn't know if that was going to be like manic good or like, really bad so he was just one of those people like my buyer didn't like him there were a bunch of people on my team who were like if he would come around they would just be like i have to go to the freezer and they would like leave um and that's kind of the vibe i got from him where i was just like oh you're kind of bad vibes and like he he talked about being vegan all the time and like you know and that's just always a downer (laughs) and um do you Listen, have nothing I else to do with your life besides about, being a vegan? I know. Well, I'm all about that that type of lifestyle. We tried it, and it <laughs> ended with work me. Well. No, it ended with me crying in front of the the hot dogs at a grocery store <laughs> because I did not do it right, and I was no. super sick. No, and I needed to eat something. Yeah, we did not have enough protein. We weren't getting yeah. the nutrients. Like we were, we were bad. Like I think you had to send me back up to the apartment, right? Yeah, because he he was literally crying in front of hot dogs. We were like, let's just. Let's just have mac and cheese and hot dogs tonight. Like, yeah. let's, we're like, both like shaking and trembling because our bodies can't, don't have enough I nutrition. And I was yet. like, but all, all the little pickies. <laughs> and he's crying. I'm like, Kevin, just go back upstairs. I will do this. I will cook it. You don't have to look at it. <laughs> I will. But we just all know. Eat it. I know, but we all know that, that people who like really dive into that dive the fuck in. Like, they are oh, yeah. in it. They do not understand. Well, and especially in Colorado. Them. Yeah. Oh my god. Like I feel like Colorado is just a whole different type of of vegan people. <laughs> Not in a yeah. bad way. It's just <laughs> no. there's extremisms, right? Like, like even me. from like the extreme um um sports, outdoor sporting, and all of that. Like the the sports teams are intense. Like everything is just That's intense true. in Colorado. That's actually quite true. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. Before Brett and I started dating, I I tried to date a vegan straight edge guy uh for like a whole month. And it just what? didn't. Yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, that was. I it was terrible. My my drinking and chain smoking really was like, yeah, straight edge <laughs> vegan is gonna work for me. Like this is the one. And it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Is, are you gonna quit smoking? Absolutely. Right, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> do tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. Um. But he would he would just do that thing where he just like talked about. Like, I get it. Like, I totally get it. There's nothing wrong with being vegan. Um, yeah. But I don't want to feel bad because I put 2% milk in my latte. Did <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you feel bad for doing that? Was he like, that's not almond? Like, what? Just, it, would ju- it wasn't like, it was that thing where it's like, you know, the properties of almond milk are much better. But it was also like very, like, scary where you're like, is he going to? Are you going to get hurt if I don't (laughs) drink the almond milk? Like, I just want to live my life. Um, And he was, like, super, super positive about everything. Like, I don't know. Maybe you'll die. Maybe you won't. But it's okay. And you're like, oh, okay. Or he's like, I guess you're having the 2% milk today. He's like, you (laughs) should be drinking the fat-free because you're going to be like... (laughs) And listen, just because you're vegan or vegetarian, <laughs> you're not your skinny bitch. Because if you're not eating right and you're eating all that sugar, you're, that ain't going to work. So, right? I ate a lot of French fries when I was vegan because they're just potatoes. So right. This works. <laughs> That's vegan. It's fine. It's a potato. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, anyway, okay. anyway, uh, anyway, we're not, you know, it is. Yeah. Um, if so you're vegan, I, we don't judge you. Like, do you? No, thing. Yeah, right? I love you. We just want to make fun of you for a minute. That's all. This guy is a dick. That's all. Normal vegans aren't. This guy's just a dick. Um, so I just kind of tried to avoid him. I just avoided him. And he didn't, uh, he didn't work at my store very long. Um, he transferred, I think he transferred to the Cherry Creek store for a little bit, but then decided to pursue his like, um, motivational speaking and like weight loss and like cookbook and all that stuff. So (laughs) he, he picks his family up. He moves them to Phoenix, Arizona, right? End of, end of Maddie knowing this person. Um, Moving on, life goes on. I moved to a couple different stores. I end up back at Highlands Ranch three years later after the birth of Emily, my first kid. Um, and I'm working as a cake decorator. And it's, I don't know, the day or the day after the day after Christmas. That could have been. Uh, so it's either the day after Christmas or the next day. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like wandering around the hallways and not doing my job. And I come across like this clique of people who are all talking and I don't know if you've ever worked with me. Like, I don't, 
I don't put on a great face. Like I don't have a, I don't have a great talk to me face at work. I have a I'm very the same, like, I'm the same way. Yeah. I'll yeah. punch you. Like I'm shit. at work. I need to get shit done. No pleasantries. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. So I'm like, I don't not talk. looking or talking to anyone, but I hear this group of people and they're talking. And of course I hear somebody say something about murdered or killed. And I'm like, Hey, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm ready to be friends now. Can we, can I just, you said the magic words. Oh, you said murder. Let's talk. Oh, yeah. oh who's dead. Oh, let's talk yeah. about it. Okay, great. Um, so I did, I literally was like, Oh, I vaguely know you. I've talked to you once. Let me just push on in here and tell me the story. Um, so I did. And um, so this is the story that was told to me. And I did put this like little disclaimer in my thing where I was like, even as I was writing this, trying to like dial in, events that happened there yep. were discrepancies so i'm going to sure. tell the story the way that it was told to me and um we'll go from there so uh, apparently um after the ross family moved from colorado to phoenix they were just living life in february of 2017 they welcomed a baby girl into their family her name is anora or was anora um but shortly after she was born the what? couple decided to s- oh yeah trick spoiler <laughs> alert shit's right. getting fucked did you hear that um, little gem was i caught that little i did, yeah. I did as well. poor God. um So shortly after she's born, they decide to get divorced, right? And so they separate and they move on with their life. So later that year, um, he has the two children for Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. So Mm. he's got them for Christmas Eve. He's got them for Christmas morning. Christmas morning. And this is when they're in Phoenix, right? They're in Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. So Christmas morning, Iris comes to the apartment to pick up her kids. Um, And he... Uh, again trigger warning like not great there's murder podcast murder is going to happen um so he leaves the kids inside and he goes outside into the parking lot and he shoots iris in the parking lot and kills her she's 38 just christmas morning people are opening their presents and drinking their coffee and he is shooting his estranged wife in the parking lot Oh, oh, fuck you. Now his name is Anthony. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, right? Milan's too good. You're not cool um, enough. He looks yeah. like an Anthony. He oh. Does. oh, that picture is a jump scare for sure. Like, oh, God, for sure. <laughs> You have to send it to us because we definitely need to use that show. Oh, wait, yes. Sure. Oh, it's in the bottom of the, it's in the bottom no. of my PDF oh. or whatever I say. <laughs> <I mean, you. laughs> fantastic. Um, so this is where stuff like starts getting, cr- like the neighbors, obviously it's Christmas morning. People are like, not expecting gunshots. So they call the police immediately. Right. Um, and he goes back into his apartment and barricades himself inside. And so then shit gets weird. So, so Iris is just like dead in the parking lot. She's dead in the parking lot. Oh my God. And he, nothing, he just left her. He just left her. What is, there, yeah. there was a rumor that he took her phone and text members of her family. <gasps> he did text her sister from his own phone. Telling her, I did find that in an article while I was researching this. I'm telling telling her, that. her that he had killed Iris. Oh, what a dick. What a fucking crazy person. Text me. Um, Christmas morning. You're like, oh, my sister is texting oh, I me. No. Nope. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Oh, just kidding. It's her, her fucking crazy husband that's told me that this is fucked up uh, already. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Buckle right. up. Buckle up, Buttercup. Oh, this is going to get worse. Um, so, obviously, police are called. They come. There's this big police standoff. It lasts for four hours. At the end of the standoff, he shoots at an officer. I don't, he didn't, I don't know if he, like, actually, like, made contact. But um, that one of his charges is, you know, like, attempted firing on an officer yeah. or something yeah. like that. So, anywho, after a brief shootout, he's taken into custody unharmed because, you know, dick bags like this are always taken into custody unharmed. Right. Um, when the police finally go into the apartment that he had been barricaded in, they found the bodies of 11 year old Nigel and 10 month old Anora. He had shot and killed both of his children. Um, <sighs> Right. The time, like, I don't know if it was before he ever went out and shot Iris. I don't know if it was after there were rumors and gossip that he was telling the police he that they were alive. 
like he wasn't going to hurt the children. He was, you know, but that was never, I don't think ever his intention. I think his. Well, I think that they probably would have reported if there were gunshots that weren't weren't directed at them, but I mean, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't look into like, I didn't go too deep into trying to find out when like babies were murdered. Um, but he definitely like that was his plan all along. There's a, there was, I don't know if his Facebook got taken down, but there was this super creepy video that he had posted Christmas Eve with his son singing Christmas carols. Oh my God. And he posted it to his Facebook. Um, Mm. so that's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Anywho, he has never given a reason as to why he killed his whole family. Um, the reports ever, not that I, not that I saw. Like uh, just unhinged. Yeah. Apparently. So So apparently what? Oh, apparently he was like getting more and more erratic and aggressive with Iris before this happened, like threatening her and just being a dick. Did she go to the cops at all for like restraining order or anything to like try to navigate I think so. his threats? Mm-hmm. Um, man, 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 man. There was there was one article I read that was like she was such a sweet person that she was just like, this is difficult. Like he's going through something. Like yeah. we're ending our marriage, you know, we're ending our family. Like he's got to work it out. Like she's just a sweet person and just thought the best of everybody and had no, you know idea that he was going to snap like this or anything like that so um so yeah it was pretty like the store was pretty rattled like i said there were a lot of people a lot of team members in the store who knew iris and knew nigel and some who had continued to be friends and text and have phone calls with this family after they left colorado and so it was like lots of people went home that day because it was just once it came out was he employed? Did he go back to the the grocery store, or did he, um, or did he never go back? I don't believe he ever went back. Okay. I do know that like his cookbook was pulled right out of there. I'd have pulled that shit too, right? Uh huh. Like that bad marketing is bad PR. <laughs> um, um, yeah, like um, you're selling, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So, um, yeah, and it was it was for me. Like I think about this all the time because Emily was 10 months old. Wow. Like th- that when baby in Nora when they died. When 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 this all went down. So his baby Anora was born the same month Emily was that year. So it's like I have a 10 month old kid. Yeah. yeah. She was a 10 month old kid. Like to me it's crazy to be like like sometimes I'll just be sitting and I'll be like oh my god she'd be almost 7. Yeah. Like that sucks. That sucks because You're her dad like- was unhinged. Yeah. Well, like, and, and innocent They're the children are innocent. If you want to do what you have, what, if you feel like you need to do that, I, I mean, I hope you don't, but the kid, kids don't, they, they have no part. And if, even if like he was having issues, well, he was having, you saying he was having issues with the mother. So like, it's just like some people kill their children because they're frustrated because they are acting up too much or they're out of line or something like that. Right. So it's like, there's, what's the point? What is the, what is the reason I don't understand. It's just, it's so hard to understand why somebody would feel like they needed to kill somebody, especially yeah. even 10 months old. Like they've, especially a parent, barely even gotten to do, like they're, they're not barely crawling at 10 months, are they? I think they're crawling at 10 months, right? Are they walking? I don't know. I don't have children. Don't have children. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think by about a year they're, they're, they're walking. walking or so. Walking. But yeah, like, well, maybe she think- wasn't walking yet. <laughs> she was crawling. But yeah. like, that's the thing is it's like, it's Christmas morning. Like these kids spent Christmas Eve with their dad, who they probably was like, this is my I mean, dad. They love for, him. And yeah. I was like, bye. I mean, and then a, he was, and were they in an apartment complex? See, that's mm-hmm. fucked up. And this is why, because all of those families, he didn't only kill his family. He impacted every single yeah. fucking person in that apartment complex. And like he cares, I'm sure, but the, like your single handed action impacted far more than, than the people that you murdered, right? You've impacted several people for the rest of her life. Um, yeah. and, and the extension goes past that to people that knew you. I, it's just like, I will never understand why people murder. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely don't understand when, when parents, if there's no, and it's not even understandable if, if somebody has like, um, uh, you know, postmart or postmart. 
<laughs> oh, what the fuck? Postpartum um, depression. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, why am I not? Re- why, I keep wanting to say postpartum. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Um, hard one. Anyway, all of that kind of stuff. I, you know, I, I guess I could wrap my head around being like, wow, they were very unwell and they didn't get, you know, what, whatever. I, there's still no excuse, but I could be like, okay, I could understand how, how a person, I guess, could, could uh, go into a state of like psychosis and, and, and perhaps uh, murder their, their kids because of, of, um, you know, um, whatever. But, uh, for, for this, I don't know if there were signs of that, but, but this seems, slightly calculated right to to walk oh, out yeah. and, and meet her in the parking lot and just shoot her dead i i i mean it's crazy because think about uh, you know me or brandon or you and brett i i just could never <laughs> even my ex I, I i don't i i don't hate him at all i i wouldn't i just wouldn't have i don't know it's so it's so bizarre to me i 100 percent believe that it was like premeditated like sure. I a hundred percent believe that he was like, this is what I'm going to do. And he picked that day and he made all the plans and that may be correct. And it may not be, but like, but it seems like it. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck? That but then you went to barricade yourself after you did that into the house with yeah. your children yeah. and then do what, what you he- did and still stay barricaded. It's just like, what did he say? I-, I mean, I also just, the whole thing with family annihilators like this is it's like, they're like, oh, I had to kill my family. And it's like, just, and then they're like, don't shoot, don't shoot, I'm literally like, hurt me. Take yourself out. All good. Yeah. Leave leave them. You do you. Goodbye. Um, Which is not, you know, I'm not advocating for suicide (laughs) because clearly my best friend died by it. But, um, but in those cases, it's like, you don't hurt other people. I, yeah, just, just do yourself and, and goodbye. And why can't you just leave? Like, if you don't want to deal with your estranged ex-wife, if you don't want to deal with your children, like, just leave. I don't, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I I agree. But I do think that kind of jumping back to when you said that you met him, this is why you have to listen to yourself, right? Because I think that there's oftentimes when you meet people and you're like, ooh, mm." and then you try again, right? And then you're like, oh, God, listen. Listen to yeah. yourself. I think that there oh, are, like, I've met some people, you know, just being back in New York where I'm like, you seem interesting. Um, <laughs> and, and it's like, goodbye, like, goodbye. Uh, and, and that, and, and that's the thing is that I think that, you know, especially now in our weird political environment where we're probably going to have a civil war or some shit, um, you know, whatever the fuck is happening, mm-hmm. listen to people, believe them, believe what they say. You know, that's why when people are like, mm, d- Trump, and I'm like, okay, we can have a civilized conversation about why. Cool. Like, we, we have good friends that actually are Trump supporters, and I can talk to them, and I'm like, I totally disagree with you, but I understand how you're brainwashed by it. But they're not the type that's going to murder me, right? Um, no, uh, like these weird MAGA people. I mean, you never know when people are in desperate situations who, who they become. Uh, but But they're not that, right? But there are some people where you're like, I... Right, like, like your energy yeah, is creepy. just way yeah, off. Their energy, their the way that they talk, the way that they say stuff, the way that they react. You're like, yeah. I was trying to think of a good way to describe it when I was thinking about this the other day, and I'm like, you know, when you're around a, an unfamiliar dog, mm-hmm. and they're like, given that vibe, where you're like, they're either gonna like go into the zoomies or they're gonna bite me. <laughs> like, we, my dog does that to me all the time, where I'm like, what's happening? Like. <laughs> Are you going to like freak out or are you going to like just zoom me around the couch? Like what's, ha- what's going on? And that was kind of how it was where you like just standing there and you're like, I'm not sure if you're going to like get really excited and like Tom Cruise jump on a couch or if you're going to like snap and throw 2% milk, like a jug of 2% milk at me. Like I, I'm, I'm unsure. And that is not a safe place to be. Like if you're, no, if you can't no. read where a person's leaning towards, it's a like, if you're, primal instinct is like get away from this person well and i think that people for the most part actually show you who they are fairly quickly Um, but i think that we as humans often put up these blinders because i think that we put trust that people are better than they are and i think for the most part humans kind of suck like in general right there's just with the deep i don't disagree and and (laughs) racism and just it's horrible and so i think that I am a, a very interesting person. It's probably because I grew up in foster care that I am pretty um, blocked off to love 
initially, right? I'm very, very, very much outgoing and, and like, hello, you know, whatever, but I don't get deep um, for a while. And it's interesting because even in our business, we've hired some people where in an interview and I'm like, Mm-mm. and everyone else is like, yeah, yes, yes. And then they turn out to be shite, right? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I should have yep. listened uh, to myself. And so, and, and those are the interesting things though, because I think that ultimately this, this Anthony guy, he is Anthony now because uh, Milan is way too cute <laughs> for him. Uh, but with Anthony, I think that he, uh, was fucking crazy. And I think that you got that vibe because you were like, something's off here. And I, I legitimately think that people, no matter what, we won't understand what, why they do what they do, um, and why they murder people, but we understand that something was right. Okay, yeah. So you obviously got him. Yeah. That's holy fuck which is okay here's a little i'm not going to say what the company is either but i also used to work there (laughs) until i walked uh and i'm very proud that i walked out but uh anyway i was at the location near my apartment on the upper west side and uh brian i haven't even gotten to tell you this yet but i went over to the meat counter because uh, I was looking at salmon and I was like, maybe I'll do a little chicken breast moment. And then I was like, well, I'll get some bacon. I don't know. And so when I'm looking, this guy comes up and he's like, salmon, uh, chicken breast, bacon. I know it's weird. <laughs> um, and I was like, do I get turkey? I'm in. Or do I get regular bacon? <laughs> anyway, it was the whole moment. I was there for far too long. This guy walks up to me and he was like, Hey, can I help you? And I was like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get bacon. And he was like, you look very familiar. And I was like, well, I used to work here and he was like, you used to work at, um, at this location at this other side of town. I was like, I did. And he's like, I still follow you on Instagram. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> and he goes, um, are you still doing the candles? Are you still making the candles? And I'm like, Oh, oh that was a while was ago. A long time ago. And I was like, no, I opened up an agency and now <laughs> here. You like, in, but in you can check out homicide the podcast i didn't <laughs> should have done that oh, he, like, but it was but he how great it was he reached over the counter like he took off his like meat club thank you um <laughs> reached over the counter and like shook my hand and he was like it's so good to see you and it's funny because some of my best relationships kelda aaron right um <laughs> not the other one but Ke- you know some great people uh <laughs> anyway those relationships have really stuck like deeply and uh, I met some really incredible people back in the day with that company before it changed. Um, 100%. And, and, and this guy was a, an example. Do I remember his name? I don't, um, which is unfortunate because I, I'm not very good with the names. But, uh, but it was lovely to like walk into that environment and be like, holy shit, that was kind of cool. Those are the good people. That Anthony's a fucker, clearly. Oh, yeah, right? for sure. He's and the like, worst. Yeah, don't shake my hand. Thank you. No, no. And it was also that thing of like, if you work in retail and you're super positive, super happy all the time, there's something fundamentally broken in your brain. Listen, and I remember when we, when, when we worked in the cheese department, <laughs> um, and people would walk up and be like, I would, or, no, 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 not I would like. They would walk up and they would say, a half pound of Chipotle chicken. And I'd be like, please. <laughs> and I would turn around. And I'd put that fucking meat on that that slicer, and I would be like, "I hate you, fuck." <laughs> like, no, 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 no. It was not for me. But, but also, if you're just like, "Yeah, ooh, 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 you, no, something's wrong," because that's not enjoyable. Who loves slicing deli meat? No. And you can like like your job, like sure, sure. But the the team members are who you're like. Like you have your customer voice for us. Yeah. So you're like, I would absolutely love to grab that cake for you out of the case. And then you turn and you're like, I hate this person. <laughs> See, there was I'm going to fucking punch this bitch. I know. I was not good at it. I was not being, I was not good at being like, Oh, you want a, a, a corner pound? I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, I'd be like, <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? And they would be like, well, you know, a quarter pound of Chipotle chicken. And I would be like, please. Right. <laughs> Like I was, oh, I didn't. It's like when we worked at the um, our friend's restaurant together, oh, and Kevin that. was a waiter, and somebody asked him for ranch, and he's like, it, "They didn't ask. They said I need ranch." And he's like, "Oh, do you need ranch, <laughs> <laughs> or do you want ranch?" I lasted two months. I couldn't do it. I was like, oh, "Do you need it, or do you want it?" And they were like, "Want? Like, do you like, need this to live?" I don't think so. Yeah, I. The, here's the thing. I can't. I'm not a really good. Which is funny because I'm an actor. I'm not a good person. Um, period. There it is. Full stop. 
I'm not a good um, retail customer service person because I can't really fake it. So if people are rude, my rudeness snaps and I win. Like I just, I can't do it. And that is why I don't. Oh, I'm really good at it. I'm I really good it. at pretending to like, oh, I would love to do that for you. And then I like go in the back and I'm like, don't do that for them <laughs> at all. I would love to do it. But unfortunately, mm. the higher ups say we can't. And then I'm like, I'm the higher up. I said we can't. Just yeah, I love that though. Behind your back. back. You just yeah, stand up on the steps a little bit higher being, I'm higher up. <laughs> My my highlight, the highlight of my career was when I was the manager of the bakery department at another location. And I was also the acting store manager, the, the sh- acting store shifty, right? Yeah. And this woman came in and she was so mad about something and she wanted to talk to the bakery manager. And I was like, hello, it's me. I'm the only one here. And um, we kind of got into it a little bit where I was just like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Like, that's not our policy. You know. Yeah. care and then uh she walked around to the to the customer service desk and asked to speak to the store manager and just from like 15 feet away my phone rings and i just answer it and i'm like hello and they're like can we have the shifty like the store manager <laughs> and i just walked right over and i was like what can i do for you and she was like you're the you're the bakery manager and i was like and tonight i'm also the store manager <laughs> so <laughs> That's me stepping up on the step. I'll ne- I've been chasing that high ever since. I've never hit it again. Just I love that. To- this, is like, this is as high as you're going to go, bitch. <laughs> right. So. Like, do you want me to take your number down, pass it off to somebody else in the morning? Because I'm going to throw it in the trash on my way out the door. Like, <laughs> I own you. I control everything right now. That's right. This is, and here's the thing too. I don't, I don't fuck with, with people who work in, in, um, in roles like that. Right. Because I've been there. Um, but it, it's also because they have so much leverage to fuck with you Mm -hmm. that I just don't do it. Right. Um, I'm so afraid of food in general and food, food prep. Just ask Brandon, like terrified of food prep. Like we get in an argument every holiday because of it. Um, poor thing. It happens Uh, once. No, I'm just, I'm I'm giving. <laughs> Here I am giving him he the grace to say I'm crazy, and he's but like, you're not, I, I mean, you're not crazy, but <laughs> thank you. You do have issues touching, looking, or looking at raw chicken or any kind of raw any raw meat. meat. I'm like, ew, handle that. I took food prep classes and food. You know, <laughs> kind of, it's actually really annoying. This Christmas, Brandon and I got into it. Not, we don't fight, but like we got into a little mini whatever. Maybe it's a little bit more elevated than mini <laughs> medium, uh, because Brandon was. He had put Brussels sprouts in the kitchen sink, but was messing with chicken juice right next to salmon. And like, salmon. And I'm like, <laughs> but I'm like very organized. Not good. Anyway, so we had this whole thing, and I was like, I took food prep classes and I did. <laughs> It's really embarrassing. You pull out your serve safe cer- certification from 2006. <laughs> that was what it was. Serve safe. I couldn't. <laughs> anyway. This is my certification. I can't yes. remember why we just talked about that, but uh, that's that. Anyway. I will say um, to go back to your candle company. Uh, yeah. Brett just ran out of beard oil and I was like, okay, I'll order you some more off of Amazon. And he was like, well, do Brandon and Kevin still have the beard oil? And I was like, oh, honey, no. It's I wish we did too because it was... <laughs> Two beards in a Boston. Know. Yeah, we should yeah, bring that back. I, who don't yeah. know, we Kevin and I used to have our own candle line and beard care line that we yeah. would sell at craft shows in South Florida and it was like sell Denver. Out. It was, and It was like really cool. fun. Eventually, we'll bring yeah. it back. We should bring it back. We used like all organic and, and sustainably mm-hmm. sourced um, products and it was I don't know. We, I tested it on myself, which was, I think, probably the best thing because, man, my beard was lush off. Now she's getting gray. But uh, back in the day, <laughs> it was like black and full and oh, gorgeous. And people would like, ooh, actually, people would rub it, which was really, yeah, there was a, a lot of people would want to touch it. I mean, do you remember that time in Target? Yeah. There was this. Have we talked thing. about that on the podcast yet? I don't think so. Tell it. I don't think we have either. Tell it, Brandon. Okay, so one time we were in Target and you know when you're in like there's times where we just like know something's about to happen and we were we were in like the I don't know, like deodorant section where we or we were by the candles. We were smelling things 
I think I had to get deodorant. deodorant. I think that we went over to the deodorant section because I needed deodorant. Yeah, and you could hear a couple aisles over somebody was loudly talking to somebody else, but it was one of those where you're like, oh, I hope that person doesn't come over here because they know they're going to talk to us. Like, I just know what's going to happen. And so we're minding our own business, looking at things and whatever. And all of a sudden, this old man comes walking around to the corner into the aisle we were in and starts talking to us. And we're like, of course, he's going to start talking to us. But he starts talking about Kevin's beard because at the time, it was a little bit longer than it is now. Like, And people would gorgeous. normally people would bring that up. They would either ask it for twins or want to touch Kevin's beard. It was weird. Yeah, that's a that's a. <laughs> that, there's a lot of gray area that they could have landed in there and they did not. No. And listen, I don't know why people want to talk to me in general because I do not look approachable. I know that. People no, your wrestling bitch face is a lot. It's pretty those, intense. Those big eyebrows get people to like yeah. turn around. Um, mm, but course, it, yeah. for him, it invited him, him in. And so he starts talking about um, beards and how his wife won't let him grow a beard because it's scratchy and this and that. And it was like a good like five minutes of talking until he's like, can I, he just goes to Kevin, can I touch your beard? And it was at the time where we were going to a lot of craft shows selling out our product. And Kevin would be very open to be like, yeah, touch my beard, feel it and see how the product is. He was very open with it. Why are you letting people touch you? (laughs) This was way pre COVID. Listen, it's so every person that touched it, they were like, oh my God. And they bought it. At least he asked and didn't just like. He did. Well, so as he's touching it, he's, he touched it for a very long time, but he was like grabbing it and like tugging it. He tugged it. He was like, and, and I'm like, uh, and so did he think it was like, a, like fake? I don't know. <laughs> well, after a second, he's what did he? I, I don't even remember what he okay, said. So after he he's like, literally, this is what he's doing. He's like rubbing into my beard, and then he's Mm-mm. like hugging a little bit, and I'm like, okay, this is a hard pass. Thing. Like I don't I don't even <laughs> let people come in my beard. Like I'm not I'm not doing it right. Well, that or, that's or a guy, mess. So, like, that's no. Um, it's a gay podcast. Hello, but <laughs> this guy is like, um, so he's doing that, and then he goes, "Oh my god, I gotta stop! I'm getting way too excited." And I, of course, looked right down at his dick, and I'm like, "You're getting hard. Like, you're getting a full on hard on." Like, I, and then, and I'm like, "Oh my and god!" He was old. Like, he had to have been he, like eighty. Like, he like, had to have been in his old. 80s. Like, he's probably dead now. Um, it was. <laughs> And and listen, he died enjoying a, thinking a about that beard. Of your own it's beard. on his tombstone. It was it was yes. so. <laughs> you're like, and wait, was, you're just talking about your wife, and now you're getting excited touching his beard. Like this, was, this is all just a lot right now. The poor thing. He was probably you know because he's older. He's probably closeted and jerks off to your beard, beard dudes. Well, at least he maybe he off. was mad his wife wouldn't grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maddie, that is a great. Um, you know, everybody has a fetish. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the fact that he put his hands like into your beard up to your mouth, it, it was more it, than a beard. It, Usually it was about more than they a beard. They'd be like, they'd be like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was like in it. Oh my God. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like my lips moving. Like, that's, <laughs> if my lip is moving, it's a little aggressive. Yeah. It was, just, and I didn't know what to do. I was like frozen, which is not normal. Cause I'd be like, get the fuck. But he was, I, once I saw his dick, like, I'm like, ah! <laughs> we gotta go. Yeah, now, however, you got an 80 year old man hard by him touching your beard. Like, that's Impressive. a compliment. Thank right? Thank it's you. a compliment. Have you could have been the sugar baby. <gasps> like, oh, fuck. All right. And then you could. Wait, am I, too young? am I too old now to be a sugar mm-hmm. baby? We are too old to be sugar babies now. I've looked into it. Just kidding. <laughs> 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 guys fuck how are we how are we in our god damn it i you know i used to think when i was younger i was like god 30 so old I'll, i'm never gonna be 30 and i'm gonna be 40 <laughs> like, it just sneaks up on you my it's youngest just, will be five this year what? like that that no, ages that me more worse. than anything <laughs> that's it's like emily's got- gonna be seven and Why? Olive's going to be five. And now I'm like, I'm like, how can I have a seven year old? I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> like, God, I was a slut. <laughs> you know, or like, I'm like, what happened to me? You know what, though? We, I, I would say this, that we lived in our 20s. Oh, we sure. had a great time. I, man. From the I stories I've heard, I wish I was there. 
Not in. I either. don't know that you do. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I don't oh God. Yeah, we were different. Very little sleuths running around. Yeah, we little were little sleuths. sleuths, but we man, we would party. I remember living on Poets Row in downtown Denver in Cap Hill and walking to Vinyl, getting so fucked up. You would meet me there. Mm-hmm. And we would just dance and drink. And I think you would go somewhere else. And then I would <laughs> I would stumble home drunk as fuck. I always went somewhere else. I there was did. always an, a second oh. location for me. <laughs> you, to, you always invited me. And I was like, no thanks. I there was always me. a water bottle full of tequila in my purse somewhere. You there, know? Was, there actually was, yes. Or remember. the bottle of Smirnoff in the car on oh. the way to tracks. Like, oh, God, yeah, we did. Oh, we did do that. See, I forget about some of this shit. Oh, I like, unfortunately oh. remember it all. <laughs> but, sometimes but, i'm like think, god i used to be fun and then sometimes i'm like god i was such a mess or like well, how did i survive that i listen there were there were probably some nights that i drove home that i'm blaming you should not have maybe driven home which is awful we do not also, condemn drinking if you're drive. listening mm-hmm. do not drink and drive. thank <laughs> you mm-hmm. um but there were definitely and i was living in longmont Colorado, which is like northern yeah. Colorado. I had to drive <laughs> from tracks like 45 minutes. Yeah, that's a long drive. There was one time I took my sister Brienne out dancing and that, that bitch threw up all in my car. But she threw up, listen, and this is the worst. If you're drunk and you can think, don't do this. But she threw up on my window oh. in the slit where your window no. comes up. That's so oh, no. When I got home, I was like, you I didn't even know. I'm like, you bitch. Like, whatever. It was all on the outside of the car, on the inside, right in, in, in the in the window. Because I'm like, throw up out of the car! Throw up out of the car! As I'm driving. So anyway, I like get home and, and roll up the window on my little Honda Civic Coupe. Uh, and it literally just went oh. and <laughs> you the whole way. I could never oh. get it off. It was... Oh, no, no. No, burn the car. Horrible. But yeah, burn. throw it all away. Throw it all away. <laughs> I did. I traded the car in. <laughs> Good. I'm like, I don't know. That that has been there since I bought it. (laughs) (laughs) One time I walked home from downtown Denver with my high heels not on my feet because my feet hurt. So I walked down Colfax without shoes on. Oh Can't do that God. anymore. That's that's then, how you die. That's how you die. We're gonna get something. Some oh. kind of syphilis on the surface. We finger. got it. <laughs> we're we're good for now. <laughs> Man, that haunts me. That was like early twenty one, and I still think about that. Where I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> Which one I knew in God's that. name. I mean, that was just right when you were twenty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because mm-hmm. I met you when I was twenty one, mm-hmm. and you're younger than me, right? Just by yes. Like a, a year. Just right? by yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just by yes. <laughs> oh my God, we could go off on so many subtle tangents. But, we you know, could. Um, we, we, we we crazed. We, I know. Yeah. We probably lost half of our listeners at this point. But it's okay. Um, that's that's why we have Homotown murders. So, um, real quick, if you have a Homotown murder, we would love to hear from you. So please send it into murder at homicidepodcast.com. Remember, homicide, H O M O. Uh, cause we want to hear from you and then you could be on the show like Maddie. Yay. Yes. We love her. I'm fulfilled um, now. <laughs> fulfilled. Well, we'll have you back. You just got to tell us another murder. Uh, or I, you just I join have today. lists of actual <laughs> episodes. Right. I'm like, I've been planning this since you guys said you were going to do this podcast. I'm like, so, okay, well for my <laughs> old timey murder, I do this one. And for my new timey murder, I do that. I'm, I love it. Maddie, I Please. think that we just need to have you like as a co-host. Um, uh, yeah, occasionally yeah, we'll just have sure. Homo Town murders with Maddie. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! That would actually be really good. I would, um, I would do it. I would do it. I would quit my job right now. I will do whatever you want. <laughs> oh my god! Let us take some money from it first, Jesus. Um, and then we'll yeah. Then we can all get paid. Done. I'll do it for free. <laughs> I know. Me too. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> right. But anyway, no, Maddie, that was a great uh, yes, Homo Town murder. So much. That was a fucked up one too. Ugh, I'm always part, bringing it down. Little babies, I know. I know. Anthony's a fucking tool bag. Yeah, fuck what me. A fuck. Also, he's probably not a vegan anymore because I'm not sure that they support vegan diets. Yeah, can you get vegan well, options? Wait, there was that. Oh God, fuck! That was that. There was that guy from the insurrection, January 6th, which, by the way, was an insurrection. Okay, cool. Um, when he did the insurrection, uh, he got in. He was obviously arrested, 
Uh, it was the one with the bull horns. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck that guy. That fucking guy. And he went into prison and he was like, I need, I'm a vegan and I need to be accommodated. And I think that they mm-hmm. did. Like, I think that they actually accommodated his dietary restriction. Well, I hope they didn't accommodate Anthony and I hope somebody no. shivved him. <laughs> oh, with a, with a, <laughs> toothbrush. I don't know. <laughs> Nod down by don't they, don't they, like, teeth. on the ground. I don't yeah, know. The, it's concrete wall. I watch <laughs> too many things. <laughs> the concrete. Brandon, did yep. you say their teeth? I said with their own teeth. I mean, I you never know. It probably were. Could be. But I mean, the concrete makes more sense. With just a pencil. <laughs> That's what I would use. Just a pencil. Yeah. Like, it's I'd love to write a paper. Can I have a pencil? I Can need that it? pen. <laughs> I mean, if you get somebody in the right spot, like that shit's over. Um, I mean, I don't, I'm not hoping he died. I just hope it hurt. I hope he gets what he deserves. Yes. Like, it's kind of like when I'm like, I hope you have the day that you, you deserve. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Which it's not on me to decide what that means. I'm hopeful. But it's a pencil to the spleen. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, so you're in pain and it changes your lifestyle, but you're not dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, what were we, we were talking the other day about somebody who pissed us off and we were just coming up with all these different things. And what did I say? Oh, I, said, I hope, yeah, yeah. I said, I hope she has hemorrhoids and it never stopped bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that cut I'd rather me. die. I'd rather die. I know. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah. It's... I love it. Listen, I have spent my life being kind of nice and being like, it's okay. You know, whatever. And I'm like, fuck that hoe. <laughs> Seriously, she's a fucking cunt, and if you're listening to it, because I know you will, you trolling bitch, <laughs> go eat your own ass, you cunt. Done. Oh. Anyway. You deserve a pencil to the spleen. Oh, that's it's a different my new kind threat. I'll be like, listen, look. Listen. I know. Don't fuck with me. I'm going to put a pencil in your spleen. Like, that's <laughs> how this is going to go. Yeah. I think the pencil in the spleen is fantastic, and I, I would like sure. to Let's yeah. do it. Absolutely. I'm going, to, I'm going to pencil your spleen. <laughs> I'm going to put a pencil right in your spleen. <laughs> I love how we're like making. Just look, your next merch. This is a pen, but your next merch can just say it's going to be a pencil. It can just say in your spleen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Brandon, let's do it. Well, now it's recorded, so we have it. <laughs> uh, look at this thirty-minute episode that's now turned into an hour. I'm totally lost, everyone. But yes. Anyway, um, Maddie, I loved having you on. Thank you for joining us. Thank and you for we'll having have me. You I loved back. it. Yes, we will also have you on just a normal homicide um, episode as well, because yeah. I think that you uh, being able to join us just on that as a co-host would be fantastic. Yeah. But if you have I'll any other... fly yeah. out to you guys. Yeah. Oh my God. Honey, take a weekend. Awesome. Let's do it. You can I come will... stay with us in New York. You can stay <gasps> with us in Tampa. Mm. In Tampa. Oh, whatever you yeah. want to do. Yeah. Mm. And then you can wreck mm. us our story. Tampa's pretty fucking cool, though. Okay. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we have a whole... Well, now our house is done being remodeled. So yeah, you could just stay with us. It'd be great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. We'll plan it off. We'll circle yeah. back. We'll do something. Anyway, um, for everyone who's still listening... <gasps> thank you. Um, just like my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and probably Brandon's parents. Yes. Um, which is great. I was just really inappropriate but you're welcome i think that they're, I mean, they're used to it at this point right i think they're used to it by now yeah i did explain to them what a rim job was one time yeah we went to a restaurant and they ordered some rim job drinks and i was like do y'all know what a rim job is and they were like yeah like they put chocolate on the rim and i was like no mm-hmm. no, 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 no 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 let me tell you <laughs> the more you know the more you know what's <laughs> this I love them. It's my goal to make, to like expand their horizons in life to like all sorts of things. So I literally just said on here that I don't let people come in my beard. So <laughs> yeah. you're, you're the best person to just get it out yeah. there. I mean, yeah. you really are. No, I'm so awkward. It is what it is. But mm. anyway, um, again, if you have a hometown murder, please send it to us at murder at homicidepodcast.com. And then uh, also please subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us uh, primarily on Spotify and Apple. And then also leave us a fucking review, please. And thank you on Apple. That's oh. that. any closing <laughs> arguments, friends. Any closing yeah. arguments? No. no, thanks for having me. I love you guys. This this hometown oh. murder has is now adjourned. This hometown <laughs> murder is now adjourned. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you next time. Yay. Bye. 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 Bye.